So I was watching HOMAF's simping video, and he pointed out something at the end that stuck out to me, which I think is worth talking about. He states, don't put the girl first, because she probably will destroy you, and a lot of them think it's funny. As I've been saying, women's behavior is paralleling what is found in research on the dark tetrad, in this case psychopathy as well as sadism, has gotten to the point where it's perceived of as normal, and as a consequence, rationalized by many men as not only what should be expected, but perhaps is even acceptable in a partner. They just need to shift their behavior so that they aren't negatively affected by the women's antisocial behavior. This is an interesting state of affairs, and in this video, I will draw parallels between women's humor and research on psychopathy. First off is women's preferred humor style today, which, in a separate video called Jokes with 7 O's, HOMAF states that a joke, as women use the term today, is when you communicate something that you shouldn't be doing or shouldn't be happening, and that it doesn't mean that it's actually not going to happen. In this case, he was referring to a woman's interactions with simps, who provide her with attention, validation, but also the enjoyment of manipulating others, the same enjoyment women get from destroying men who put them first. Proyer and others in their 2012 study looking into the humor of psychopaths reference other sources which these videos reminded me of. For instance, from Dr. Robert Hare, psychopaths do not see or experience humor as something positive that may contribute to well-being but rather as something negative or as a means of achieving something, e.g. hurting others by using aggressive forms of humor. There is also a tendency to laugh when caught in an obvious lie, which has been thought of as laughing at those who believe the lie, which would explain cases wherein women find it funny they were able to convince the man to put her first, only to discard him for it. One rather telling finding by Richmond as well was that psychopaths prefer jokes revolving around outsmarting others and manipulation. It is also the case that those higher in psychopathy don't value kindness in partners, whether it be for the long or short term, and those higher in the dark triad in general prioritize partners who facilitate a drama-rich environment, as they require impulsivity as well as stimulation. In this sense, they are sensation seekers, which I have a separate video on, and the men higher in the dark triad who serve as short-term partners, as they prioritize a short-term mating strategy, would be the optimal partners for these women, but they generally won't commit. These findings directly parallel with women's tendency to find it funny they were able to destroy men who prioritize them, as well as those who make quote-unquote jokes about men they were able to manipulate. Notably, saying something is just a joke is not an uncommon behavior by sadists as well, and this trait is furthermore associated with acting as though the other person is the problem when they don't want to deal with their antisocial acts, yet another way to provoke confrontation. Dissocial personality disorder, as brought up before in a video detailing women's psychopathic behavior, is another approach to psychopathy which further details the mindset as well as behaviors of women today. It is characterized by indifference towards social obligations and an express lack of empathy, there is a large discrepancy between behavior and social norms and rules and obligations. The patient lacks the capacity to experience guilt. Negative experiences such as punishment do not particularly affect their behavior. In addition, the patient has a low tolerance for frustration and may easily become aggressive and violent. Additionally, there is a tendency to blame others or to provide plausible rationalizations for the behavior, bringing the patient into conflict with society. Unsurprisingly as well, the patient also typically lacks the ability to maintain lasting relationships. That last sentence, as well as punishment not affecting their behavior, is reminiscent of women's perpetual game playing, which tends to result in unsuccessful relationships, yet they continue this mode of interaction. Perhaps it is indicative of their prioritization of manipulation, as well as satiating a desire for a drama-rich environment through behaving sadistically towards men over having a functioning relationship but some likely perceive that such acts will aid them in establishing a relationship wherein the power dynamic is in their favor. What comes to mind here is Sadia Khan's assertion that when women are in love, they play stupid games, yet another seeming endeavor in normalizing women's antisocial behaviors. Additionally are the words of a rather young sadistic woman in her 20s who was constantly engaging in manipulative acts. As she succinctly as well as overtly put it, I need to find someone new I can bother. 
Mind you, this was the same woman who would get enjoyment out of, as well as giggle when having a shouting match with people and screaming F you. If she couldn't provoke such a situation, she was also able to enjoy being sadistic towards people and them avoiding her. In such people, there exists a perpetual drive to obtain a drama-rich environment, and this will surely be the psychology of many women that men pair with wherein she plays nice, the man provides commitment, the woman knows she now has him cornered, and then she shifts her behavior to being sadistic, it is essentially an investment on her part to obtain an ongoing source of sadistic supply. Originally, I was going to stop the video here, but something is telling me to highlight some rather interesting aspects of how women compete with each other, as well as how they shift the power dynamic in their favor. So, I've been working in administration for some time, and unsurprisingly, you end up working with many women. Unsurprisingly as well, you end up hearing or even being involved in their conversations that, if their boyfriends or husbands were aware of, they would probably break up with them on the spot. What am I talking about? Well, one thing men don't realize about women's choice of interaction style with them is that it can revolve around manipulating the man into allowing her to bully him by any means necessary, and there is a sadistic aspect to this. Women will get together to laugh about as well as one-up each other on how they're exploiting men, such as using them for money through marriage, as well as getting away with sadistic acts, and there are various ways they can establish such a position many of which leveraging that the man is more compassionate. For instance, feigning fear of the man so that he is more willing to accept her abusive behavior. If the man perceives that this assertion is genuine, she can go on to start making belittling comments about him or engage in other bullying behaviors to assert dominance. And as he has internalized that she is afraid of him, he will be less likely to retaliate in any manner. Similarly, women will preemptively assert that men should just be nice which serves the same purpose. This assertion can come up when a group of women who are in the presence of a man are talking about how a particular man, likely the partner of one of the women present, has been dealing with her bad behavior while feigning compassion for him. What you can pick up on, however, is that they're getting enjoyment out of the conversation and this idea of the man dealing with her, which is why they bring up such stories to begin with. As they are in the presence of a man, however, they will also emphasize how nice the other man is as a positive thing under the presumption that the man didn't pick up on the covert, sadistic aspects of the conversation. This situation is furthermore used as an opportunity to push him in the direction of behaving in the same manner under the guise of this being a trait the man should strive to emulate, but in all actuality, these tactics serve to shift the power dynamic in their favor. Seemingly, this preemptive manipulative measure serves to not only aid one of the women present who may pair with the man in the future in dominating him, but any woman he pairs with in the future for that matter, a behavior perhaps indicative of female in-group bias. Of course, men's ability to endure women's sadism will be asserted as quote-unquote masculine, but this is yet another endeavor in precarious masculinity wherein women's antisocial behaviors are pushed as normal, as it is to their benefit, simultaneously being pushed as being to men's benefit, and they need men to play along. What is actually occurring is the man is being abused, which the women enjoy. This is furthermore why many women will insist on incessantly talking to and or at men, whether they express interest in continuing contact or not, as they need to data mine him in order to see which specific manipulation tactics work in their favor. Tactics that may be related to other women if they also interact with him. The more interactions, the more data they have to work with. This generally plays out as the women insisting that the men spend copious amounts of time with them early on. There are so many behaviors women engage in that are obviously detrimental to men, and yet people don't pay much attention to them. Case in point, people commonly acknowledge that how an individual treats those they have nothing to gain from, for instance, the waiter of a restaurant or just regular men in general, is indicative of how they view others and how they can treat them later on. But facts such as this go completely out the window when it comes to how women commonly treat men. Anyway, some things to think about, as I do not think these tendencies in women, regardless of how common, should be written off by men as something they should just ignore, dismissed by simply calling women crazy, commonly associated with assertions of women not knowing what they're doing, which is not the case, or shift their behavior around, as is the case with acquiescing to women's need for excitement which is a trait of sensation seekers who are more prone to cheat, but rather red flags to avoid.